Good morning, grade five. This is Sean, or Mr. Bolson here, uh, <laughs> calling in. I just had an interesting morning going and processing wood and uh, keeping busy. I'm hoping you're all keeping busy as well and uh, adapting to this new uh, learning environment. Anyways, uh, so today we're learn we're continuing with our story from yesterday, but I did miss something yesterday that I did want to share with you. So I just wanted to come over here because we're talking about how the disciples. Uh, you know, had this uh, lack of trust in Jesus. And the other day, I'm um, in, in church, uh, okay, online church, <laughs> I saw this, um, this great, uh, this great verse brought out here. And um, the pastor was talking about how, uh, you know, when the, when Judas comes with the guards and uh, all those guys to arrest uh, Jesus, he um, goes out before his disciples and he says this, they answered him, uh, or he asked, whom are you seeking? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said to them, I am he. And Judas, and uh, who betrayed him, uh, also stood with them. Now, when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. I think that, that there is something interesting in itself, that they fell to the ground. But we won't focus on that today. Um, but then he said, then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus Andrew answered, I have told you that I am he, therefore if you seek me, let these go their way. And when he says these, he's talking about his disciples. And so you see Jesus coming before his, you know, his flock and he says he's trying to protect them from these uh, guards. He doesn't want them to get hurt as well. So he hands himself over um, so that his disciples are safe. And so when we think about this, thinking about uh, how the disciples were thinking earlier, that Oh, we'll go with him and we'll die with him. It's like, it's so incredible to see, you know, that a lack of trust in Jesus and how he was going to, you know, protect them and not let them get hurt. Um, and so we just see that here, you know, that he wants them to be able to go their way without, and only, and he bears all the uh, the pain and suffering. So that's, that was an incredible verse. And I wanted to share that with you yesterday, but with this whole new technology thing, I, <laughs> I forgot it was on a different tab and it just uh, slipped by. Anyways, I didn't want to let that go without um, showing you. So that was uh, quite incredible. So today, yesterday we left off with, um, you know, the Jews saying, yeah, see how much they loved them. And then we kind of skimmed over this part. Uh, and today, so we're just getting to the part where Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Um, but I mean, we, had, we read this uh, verse 37 here. We didn't really um, dig into it too much. But you see, because some of them said, look, see how much he loved them. But others said... Others show their their, un, their unbelief, right? They say, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? And show, so they show a lack of faith here because, you know, Jesus had, well, he's actually there to uh, save uh, or to raise this guy from the, or Lazarus from the dead. And uh, yeah, they're, right away they're saying, ah, oh, could he not do this? Um, and so they're doubting him. And um, Jesus was deep, uh, deeply moved again. He came to the tomb. So you still see this human side of him, um, you know, the, the human side uh, where he's deeply moved and his soul is, you know, shuddering for these, this uh, death. And then um, he comes to the cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone right there. Take away the stone. And Martha said, uh, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor for he has been dead four days. Now, we we talked earlier in the year about um, the uh, the other the widow's son being raised to life, and um, that was in Galilee. So people here probably haven't um, seen the raising from the dead. But this is also a more I guess kind of a bigger raising for, from the dead, especially for the Jewish people of that time, because um, they thought that a body's soul slowly left the body, and so. They thought that if you raised him right out, or if you, uh, a healing right after uh, someone died would be different than a healing, you know, a few days later, right? Because they thought the soul was long gone by now and the body was just, uh, you know, a husk or you know, it was just a body now. Um, but, uh, so anyway, that, I, we don't know anything about that. The Bible doesn't really t talk about that, but, um, uh, they, they believe that at the time. So when he heals them, uh, when he raises them from the dead, it's even more miraculous. So uh, even Martha here says, like, yeah, there'll be an odor and he'll be, he's dead four days. And so now we get to this part and he said, uh, he says, did I not tell you that if you, uh, 
uh, that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And so he's just reminding her that, because she said she did believe. And um, so they take away the stone, they follow his directions, and then he lifts up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And he also says, I always knew that you'd heard me, but I said this on the, the account of the people standing around. So he's doing, he's speaking out loud because he's, and the whole, remember the whole miracle, and he waited uh, two extra days to perform this miracle, and it's all about bringing God glory, and there's a purpose in his action. So when he's praying this prayer in front of people, he's got a purpose to, um, you know, uh, help these people come to faith. And so we see that, and that's uh, you know quite impressive. Uh, like Jesus is per being purposeful here at this time, and he's trying, his purpose here is to glorify God and also to bring people to faith. Um, and that's why a lot of these miracles are done. And that's why the book of John is actually uh, written. A lot of the miracles are shared so that uh, they bolster our faith and can help to bring us to faith. Um, and so uh, when he said these things, he cried with, the, with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And uh, the man, Lazarus, who had died, uh, came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. And so, yeah, we just see, you know, Jesus spoke. He cried out with a loud voice, and he brought Lazarus back to life. And so we can take this in a lot of different ways. One way we can think about this is just the uh, the power of words, and especially uh, God's word. God spoke the world into creation, and um, we also see... Um, you know, prayer and uh, his cry here to bring Lazarus back to life. So that's uh, a beautiful thing. And now we see this, that many of the Jews, therefore, had, who had come with uh, Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. And so this is uh, quite nice because, you know, actually in, the, in my teaching material, it said some of the Jews. And so I want to highlight this word because... The actual word is many, and so we see that, you know, these, sometimes we can get like a pessimistic view about the gospel and um, its power to reach, reach people, and you see that many people actually came to faith through, um, through this, right, so, and then believed in him, um, and it was only some of them that didn't, so obviously it's all, circum like there's cer certain circumstances where uh, more people will come to faith and less people, but uh, we see that with uh, the Apostle Paul uh, on his adventures. But what we do see here is that uh, we want to stay you know, positive, that when we tell people about Jesus, that um, you know, we shouldn't be assuming that they'll have a negative response. You know, some will, but there's others who won't. And so we can see that, and that's you know, almost always the case, that you'll have some that are hard of heart and some that are open to the gospel, and it's all through uh, God's grace. And we can never tell who's going to be um, open to the gospel. It's uh, those people who, you know, God has worked in uh, to soften their hearts to um, to come to God. Otherwise, if we're left to our own devices, we'd be like these next people. You know, these some of them went to the Pharisees and told what Jesus had done. So, some of these guys decided that instead of you know believing this a, ma a miraculous thing, they decided to go to the Pharisees and tell them what Jesus had done. And this is basically to try and uh, damage Jesus. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council, and they said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. And so I think this is quite incredible, right? They're scared. They're basically scared. They realize, even these people who went to tell them, um, you know, they realize that everyone will believe in him. Um, maybe that's a, their own a bit of a you know, exaggeration, but because they won't. <laughs> but uh, um, they're worried. You can see that they're worried that, they, that he's obviously doing miraculous signs, and and they aren't doing anything miraculous. Um, in fact, they're being cruel to people, and you know, not uh, you know trying to help them up, and they're putting a heavy weight of the law on their shoulders, and. Um, Meanwhile, Jesus is lifting that burden and loving people and healing people. And so we can see that they're worried that everyone will believe in him. And they're mostly worried because of uh, the Romans will come and take away our place and our nation. 
And if you wanted a clearer picture of the thorns of worldly um, life getting in the way of your salvation, this is it. This is the such a clear picture, right? That these guys, they have the Lord God Almighty in front of them doing miracles, and here they are worried about their place on earth and their their uh, their nation. They're worried about the Romans. Um, they're worried about the Romans when they have the king of the universe nearby. Um, it's <laughs> it's silly to think about, but um, yeah, they uh, they just can't see it. Their hearts are so hardened that even when he's right there in front of them um, doing these miracles, they uh, just can't believe it, and they're focused in on um, their possessions and their worldly gains. And these are the people who call themselves the spiritual leaders, right? And yet you can see that they are focused on their um, their physical material wealth instead of their heavenly rewards. Um, we see one of them, uh, Caiaphas, uh, who was the high priest that year, said, you know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not the whole nation die. Uh, he did not say this on his own accord, but it, being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather uh, into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. Um, so from that day, uh, too bad I can't see it. Anyways, from that day, they, they, they make plans. So even though uh, Cephas kind of is uh, warning them that they're going on the wrong path, they still make plans to uh, seek out uh, the death of Jesus. Um, so there's a few little uh, you know things that we can learn here. And this kind of brings us back to our... Uh, you know, unbelief, the idea of unbelief, and, you know, that that comes in different forms, and we saw, if you remember, I think it was quite a bit before the March break, but we did talk about, like, those different ways of unbelief, and it was, um, had to do with the facts, not accepting the facts, and, you know, always wanting more evidence, and not, uh, you know, never having enough, and I told you that story of a, a friend of mine who was, uh, you know, I talked to, and talked to, and talked to, and gave him all the facts, and, uh, he would still not believe, and he always wanted more evidence, more evidence, more evidence, and, you know, that's a sad thing for him to go on like that. Um, but ultimately, right, even when you're asking for more and more evidence, you're eventually just denying the facts, and that's what these guys are doing. They, they have, first off, they were, you know, wanting more evidence, more evidence, and now that the evidence is so clear, so, so clear, they uh, just reject the facts completely, and they uh, just want to kill him, put him away. Um, and we see that, that uh, it's already prophesied and they're doing exactly what they are, uh, you know, what is foretold that he's going to die for the nation. Anyways, guys, um, I don't uh, necessarily have a question for you today, but I'd like you to take these, these thoughts with you and just to uh, maybe discuss with your parents, uh, you know, maybe experiences they've had with people with unbelief or maybe go dive deeper into the text or somehow uh, yeah just talk with your parents about this whole thing anyways it was a pleasure talking to you i hope you guys are all staying safe and that uh, you have a pleasant week ahead bye-bye now uh, let me close this off